remain on Mount Olympus, and she even tried to detain the goddess of childbirth, Alethea, but with the help of Iris, they were both able to reach the island. Leto first gave birth to Artemis, who was said to offer her mother assistance with the birth of her twin brother, hence why Artemis was often associated with childbirth. In the days that followed, Apollo was eventually born. The time difference between the two births does vary. In some accounts he was born the day after his sister, and in others it wasn't until several days after. Leto now faced the almost impossible task of raising Artemis and Apollo while being exiled from the other gods. She would receive no help, and the mother and her two children travelled to Lycia in seek of refuge. The influence and fury of Hera continued to follow Leto and her children. The local villagers even attempted to stop them drinking from wells and springs, and as a result, Leto turned them all into frogs. Artemis and Apollo continued to grow at an incredible rate, and their newfound skills with a bow meant that they were now more than capable of defending themselves as well as their mother. When the dragon Python finally found them, Artemis and Apollo killed the beast despite only being days old. Once Artemis and Apollo were fully grown, they were only concerned with avenging their mother and winning back her honour and place amongst the gods. During a ceremony in the name of Leto, the mortal Niobe taunted the goddess claiming that she was more deserving of a place amongst the gods because she had given birth to seven sons and seven daughters. But the twins were so incensed by the insult that they decided the mortal would have to pay for her hubris. Apollo, with his poison arrows, struck down her seven sons, and Artemis her seven daughters. The punishment may sound extremely harsh, but Artemis and Apollo had grown up with their mother being exiled and continuously hunted. Their reaction to the insult was a message to all, that they would no longer tolerate this kind of disrespect. It's believed that Artemis and Apollo then traveled all the land. Undertaking, I mean, something's going to happen with the government. Something's going to happen with the economy. There is a huge breakdown of the government. Saturn rules government, Pluto rules breakdowns. Major events that are extinct. So the out of bounds people by contrast, the out-of-bounds, not the near-out-of-bounds, the, the fully out-of-bounds people are successful only by creating an alternative system. They are not good at integrating what they have to offer. You have to join them. You have to go and join them. Typically, they completely leave mentally. They're weaving, sometimes even physically, but mentally, they leave the mainstream. They create their own way. They're not as good at integrating and being successful. So every astrological configuration has its strong points and weak points. You know, it, it has its its destiny, its path, its its purpose. Um, there's always a positive and negative potential to any anything. Um, but you can see more clearly if these ideas are true. These are just models and concepts I've I've come up with. They, they seem to work very very well. Uh, other people have confirmed and found independently similar ideas. Um, but we'll see. We need to do more controlled research. I think Stephen is doing some some more detailed research on this. Um, and I can't wait to see what additional information he has about it, um, as well as many other people. So uh, so both the near out of bounds and the fully out of bounds uh, planets don't necessarily have a better alternative, but they think they do, right? So you know, they, of course, we always think 
where we're into is right by, by definition. Uh, so I wanted to make that clear. And so I've already mentioned this one of the ideas inspired by Stephen Clark. Okay, as well as you know many other people like Kate Porter and, and other people as well. Now here's my I think this is my last slide. Yes, um, last point. It, it feels like the people with planets in Gemini and Sag get to have all the fun. <laughs> if you have planets in Gemini and Sag, your planets might go out of bounds and you get to be weird. And same thing with Sag Cap, Sagittarius and Capricorn. Even though we think of Capricorn as being uh, conservative, you can get out of bounds planets to, to send you outside the mainstream. So this seems to be the wild and fun areas. And if you have planets near Aries, this is Aries, Cancer, Libra, uh, Capricorn, and then back to Aries. If you have planets around Pisces, Aries, or uh, Virgo, Libra, around this area, um, the planets are just not going to be out of bounds. I mean, more planets can't be. They're going to be near uh, the celestial equator. They're going to have small declination. So they're in the middle of the road. How boring is that? It seems a little unfair. Well, it's not so unfair.